Clap it up. We are back. Another year of MLB The Show. And we're talking about 18 finally. It's here. We got Nick Livingston, Lance Leahy. We're ready, boys. Go. We Woo! are ready. Today, we're covering a lot of interesting stuff. We're going to get into the weeds, and we're going to get interesting nuggets of information about hitting, gameplay, AI, a new legend, and we're going to break down the trailer you just watched for all the little details. And one other thing, we're going to have some sweepstakes later on. Just need to read a few things to you real quick. Yeah! One of the most, most interesting <laughs> stuff for the stream. Let's go! At 2.50 Pacific time, so in about 50 minutes from right now, Listen for the keyword. There's no purchase necessary for the sweepstakes. Woo! Just got to be online at 3 o'clock Pacific time in about an hour to win. Got to be 13 years or older. U.S. resident or D.C. Void, Void where, where prohibited. prohibited. Void what? <laughs> and we're putting the rules right now on the shownation.com and in the Twitch chat. So look for that link. But. Love rules. First off. Love them. That trailer. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Great. Call your shot. <sighs> Call your shot. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? Let's do it. Uh, we're going to run through real quick. We're going to look at some stuff. A lot of speculation as to what was in the trailer and what, uh, what we teased. So we can't, tell you, uh, we can't tell you everything, but we teased a lot of stuff in there. How many people noticed that the first shot of the trailer is actually Babe Ruth? That was a nice little mm -hmm. Easter egg. Mm -hmm. Literally the first thing you see right there. Babe Ruth. Foreshadowing. Matt, hit us with the next slide. Then Ooh. we did a real quick bang, bang, bang. Oh no, the words. Yep. And, uh, and we showed you a bunch of stuff back to back, right? One of them was a new legend, Troy Percival. He averaged 35 saves per year between 96 and 2004. And in the game, he can dial it up, throw some gas. Yeah. So that'll nice. be a fun closer. Um, next slide, Matt. Lee Smith, third most saves all time. Fastball slider guy, also can dial it up. Gross. Real good closer. Next slide. Road to the show. Ooh. Can't tell you anything, but as you can see in this slide, a couple of big new technical uh, developments here is that we've got clothing, off the field mm -hmm. clothing being utilized, and there's a lot of uh, heated debate online about <laughs> whether this is a bus or a plane, and it's actually a Hyperloop. <laughs> no, uh, it's a, this is a bus, uh, but uh, there may be other um, environments in the game. We'll talk more about that on March mm -hmm. 8th. Also, to clarify, this is Road to the Show specific. It's not mm -hmm. a franchise. Next slide. Okay, yeah, so more Road to the Show stuff we tease later in there. We'll talk more about that on the March 8th stream. A lot of fielding uh, overhauls and camera changes. Next slide. Ooh. Uh, you know, as usual, we got a nice uh, little new suite of, like, hairstyles, and the skin mm -hmm. is looking real good this year. I don't know exactly the technical stuff, but I've heard the words subsurface scattering. Don't know if we have that, but it sounds cool, so it looks cool. Uh, next slide. Doc Ellis, 121 wins in the 70s. Dude was a staple on the mound. He threw the no-hitter, which if you don't know what that means, go ahead and Google it and educate yourself. It's a legendary story of baseball lore. Yeah. Yep. Pee Wee Reese, selected to the Hall of Fame in 84, yeah. 10 time All Star, primary character in a popular movie about another character, another person in our game, Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. Yep, good contact. Jackie. Contact fielding speed guy right here. He'll be fun to play with. Nice. Next slide. This is a big one, and they're going to talk more about Ooh. this later in the stream. Uh, so. I don't Catcher even have to efficiency, say Catcher blocking. You know, we'll a little fun, fun stuff about this. You see the paint on the fingernails. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sally is always looking fresh and smelling fresh. <laughs> little known fact the ritual and the item in the game, uh, perfume, was based on uh, Salvador Perez's tendency to wear perfume so that the umpires will have a better experience uh, <laughs> calling the game behind him. That's a true story. Next slide. This is why we do this. You don't learn these do things. <laughs> Nothing goes ignored in our game. We are, we are people of the details. Every little thing matters. Uh, you got some situ situational awareness being shown by Trey here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of new stuff like that in the game. They're going to talk more about that in a later stream. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Uh, this is a home run camera bore. Uh, this, is this uh, just late oppo power confirmed? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, they'll talk more about that in the gameplay stream. Don Sutton is in the game. All-time great, selected to mm -hmm. the Hall of Fame in 98, 7-month strikeouts, 10th-most shutouts. Good stamina. 
Great stamina. Great stamina. Hence Long the career. shutouts. Benito. Benito Santiago behind the plate. His rookie card is going to be gross, I think, because in yeah. the rookie series, he, had, he basically a 2020 guy, batted 300 that year. 34 game hit streak his rookie year, too. So, wow. And he was an excellent defender yeah. all his career. Defensive grade. Yeah. A lot of people were pretty hyped about the face mask. Did not expect that, but you know, safety first. So I don't know why I was surprised. Especially if you're going to be destroying, you know, marketing uh, phrases off the screen, which I'm always a fan of. Going to need a face mask. Careful <laughs> of the shards. Next slide. We got the judges' chambers. I'll give you five seconds to count the number of Ramones in this picture. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. Next slide. <laughs> a lot of new crowd updates, though. Uh, they'll talk about that on a later stream. And then, of course, we revealed Babe Ruth, um, the fantasy smoke. What a feel-good yeah. feel moment. I mean, we know you're excited. We were as excited, too, and we couldn't yeah. wait to tell you finally. It was awesome. And then we got a couple of uh, th more slides that show that we sprinkled a lot of stuff in throughout mm -hmm. the trailer that these guys are going to talk about um, in, on this stream or later streams. One of them is the post-play emotion has just been amped up, and they're going to talk more about that in a later stream. But we, we demonstrated a lot of moments for that. Next slide. Uh, legend teams were teased on the thing. They, these are they are they are cool. The Diamond Dynasty uniforms they made cool. with the editor, but they they may be teasing a, a feature to be discussed in detail later. Uh, and then this is a big one, and this is a great segue um, for me to get off the couch and bring somebody in who's going to have a lot more interesting things to say. Uh, tag system, I'll say no more. I'll get off of here. All right, Nick. Thanks for having me, guys. It's so exciting. Oh, man, I'll go watch the rest of the stream. Have fun, everybody. Thanks for having me. Oh. That's, your, that's your trailer breakdown. Nick Livingston, thank you so I much. I, I need this mic. <laughs> we're going to swap mics real quick. As we're about to get into a lot of the gameplay yep. and AI stuff we want to talk about, we're going to bring in our experts on this matter. And Lance, you've been working so much with Chris Gill, who's about to come on. And, you know, last year was a big change for us. We took a big step forward with the hitting, the gameplay. We saw ball physics introduced, yep. a lot, very new stuff, a lot of hit variety. And this year, we have a new focus, kind of, on what, what's yeah. changing with all that. Yeah, so, I mean, our primary focus this year with gameplay is all about competitive gameplay, mm -hmm. right? Two players hashing it out. Right. Who's the best? Who's right. the king of the diamond? Um, and all of our focus is about impacting and changing systems that have a really big impact on competitive gameplay. So obviously, mm -hmm. as we have up here above us, tagging's huge in online gameplay, and we wanted to make a big change to that. Now here's Chris, Chris Gill. Gill. Hello, everybody. Does he have an official <laughs> title there, Matt? There he is, baseball. That's your official title. <laughs> So yeah. So what are you guys talking about? What's new in 18 and how, you know, all the setup tags, the running tags and the standing, what is it, standing something tags? Standing, standing free, free tags. tags. Standing free tag system. So yeah, we're super excited this year. We did a complete overhaul with our tagging system. Mm -hmm. And as uh, everybody that's probably watching this stream understands and realizes that tags were a big problem last year. Um, and especially in certain situations. Um, I think I'll back up a little bit, and I heard you say it while I was getting my mic on. Yep. A, a lot of our, um, uh, what we were trying to do this year was, was create a, a more competitive, balanced online game. Yep. Um, a lot of what right. we've done in the past has been, you know, working on things specifically, but not so much focusing and concentrating on two-player games. Right. And so what we found watching a lot of uh, two-player games and watching online was there were a lot of exploits and there were a lot of uh, frustrating things that would happen where you felt like you weren't in control. Mm -hmm. And so um, by doing a lot of like, you know, focusing on those things and watching those games, we were able to figure out what those were. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today is trying to make the online game a lot more competitive and balanced. And, and so it, at the end of the day, you don't feel like you were cheated um, in so many ways, right? Absolutely. Um, we're going we're gonna to have a lot of examples showing 17 to 18. We're going to have some graphics. We're going to go through this. We're going to go deeper than maybe we've ever gone before just to show you kind of really how much effort and detail we've put into all the new hitting, the tag system, fielding from the catcher animations you kind of saw in the trailer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in the AI team and the animation team has done an unbelievable job this year working really hard. 
Um, and I think everybody's going to be really excited. Uh, I, you guys made some slides, right? Do you want to pull those up and we can just talk about the tags? Mm -hmm. um, some of the uh, comparisons are really cool because what you'll see in 17 um, are the things that you're used to right now uh, where, uh, you know, an example here, he slid back in and you can see that the tag wasn't applied. Um, and then if we show you what we have in, in 18, right. he's positioned a little bit different, right? Yep. He's not only out of the way of the runner coming back, so he's ready for we're, it. we're creating less yeah. um, the interpenetration between the two players, but you can see the precision on the tag here mm -hmm. where the right gloves, on the exactly on the hand. And I do want to mention that, um, you know, the guy that wrote the, uh, the tag system is the same guy that wrote the, um, the running system. And um, the significance of that is that um, it's all about times and knowing where the runner is. If you're mm -hmm. going to tag somebody, you want to know where his hand is, where his foot is, mm -hmm. in time, how long it takes someone to get there. So no better person to write that logic than the guy that did the running. And because he's used to that code, they work hand in hand together. Mm -hmm. So um, it's unbelievable the difference between last year and this year. Super excited about it. <clears throat> so here's another really good example of the accuracy of the uh, tag. Yeah, right on the foot. Yeah. More realistic, smarter. I mean, it just seems like it, it, it looks right. You know, it looks right. We got it. Here's another example of 17, and uh, I think this, oh, this is, is, cool. is this is a this is a rundown, rundown situation. Yeah, I know rundowns were a big problem, <laughs> and, and especially online, and it would be really frustrating. Where an example here is where the <clears throat> the user's put into a run, but he plays a standing tag instead of a running tag, right. and there were ways to exploit the, the the base running. And I know online, you would get a lot of guys that would do this on purpose just to score oh, a run from right. third. Right. And so this is kind of what I was talking about. You can see the precision here now. Um, he did it with the ball in his hand there. He did. He'll, right. he'll do it with, it with the ball in his hand or with the ball in his glove. Uh -huh. I mean, technically, you'd want to probably tag a guy with the ball in your glove, but it just mm -hmm. depends on where it ends up in his hand at mm -hmm. the time. So um, whatever the play was before, if he's running, the ball happens to be in his glove, he'll tag with the glove right. and vice versa with, with the, uh, the ball in his hand. So this is another funny one. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing to know that this was actually in 17, but I'm happy to say that this has been resolved. And um, here's an example in 18 of what happens when you try to run through a base um, when you should be sliding. And again, this is another exploit that was happening online quite a bit. Yep. Guys would just continue to run. And once you learn that system and learn those exploits, it kind of you know, creates well a, a less than fun environment, I yeah, think, I mean, online, and people get extremely, yeah. you know, pissed off at each other. Well, and the runner didn't go right through them either. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, there was a lot of choreographing in the in the motion capture studio, and um, and and tons of tags. I mean, we have tags um, at all different heights. So we have standing tags, running tags, ball in hand, ball in glove, um, and rundown tags. Um, all the setup tags at the base have been refined so that there's pinpoint control for the glove going on, um, the home plate slides, and I, I mean, I'm sorry, tags. And then uh, one thing I should point out before I forget, because I know a lot of people were upset about the, the slide into home where the guy's arm was bent. Um, and a lot of times they'd be out just, you know, on a bang, bang play at the plate where they thought his arm should be extended. Well, that's been fixed too. So we have um, stretched out arms at right. home plate. So now, you know, it's a good balance between the tags and the runners. Um, I think there's even an example of that later on. Okay, we'll take a look at I mean, we're talking about, what, a few changes, Chris? Dozens of changes or hundreds? What are we talking about here in scope? Yeah, in scope, we're talking about hundreds of animations that were added. Um, wow. And the logic, I mean, we spent a couple months writing this logic. It was expensive in terms of time, but it's well worth it. Um, yeah. And I think that um, it's, a, it, it's appreciated by all of us. Yeah. I know when we're playing the game. Right. Um, these are things that we're aware of. We always were, but again, we only have so many hours in a day and we only have so many days that we can work right. and we have to pick and choose what we are working on every year to give you guys the best experience. You want to take a look at another one here? Keep going, yeah. So this was 17, so we're showing you a lot oh, of this is a great one. comparison here. This is a little combo. Oh, so this is really cool. So I'm gonna, you're going to play this twice, Matt, okay, so that they can see it from this angle. So what you're going to look at here is Matt... After he rewinds it here, you're going to focus on the third baseman. So he fields the ball, and this is 2017. You could see the inaccuracies at times in 2017 where they would just swing and miss on the tags. And then you could also see there that he didn't branch his throw. 
Um, right. Now I'll show you what's happening in 2018 on the identical play. It's a third baseman. The third the baseman's yeah. fielding the ball, and we'll play this twice. He plays the tag, and he branches seamlessly into a throw to get the double play. And this is exactly what would happen in real life. And unfortunately, last year, these things weren't happening for you, and it was disappointing. And these are things that would, you know, potentially you would lose games on because when you don't get the outs, they were just extending innings, right? So, you know, maybe it was your, maybe you're up one nothing, but that could have been your third out to win the game. The next guy gets to the plate and hits a home run. So these are the things that you, literally you could win and lose games on. So we took it very seriously. Yeah. And... Um, and that was a really cool example. I really, I really, I really like when they, when they use all the new branching um, that I was going to get into in a little bit, the branching throws. I'll talk more about that, too. Great. But that was a good example. What else you got, Matt? Uh, the catcher stuff. You that. Okay, so, so yeah, th so that's it with the tags. I mean, um, that was a pretty good overhaul. The next thing we're going to talk about is the uh, catcher efficiency. So, again, playing online games, uh, two-player games more importantly yeah. i mean when you're playing against the cpu it's not a, as big of a deal mm -hmm. because there's really no one to get frustrated with and you can take advantage of the cpu but when you're playing competitive games online it needs to be fair and it needs to be balanced and one of the most frustrating things i think for for these guys playing online was that they didn't feel like they were in control so if a catcher blocked the ball and the ball only went five feet away from them mm -hmm. the catcher would stand up use a start transition run over and use a pickup go to the throw ready, and then throw. It's very and choppy, very choppy. It was choppy, but it also took a lot of time, time that you don't have. Right, so right. inherently, the runners knew that when there was a ball in the dirt, they would just take advantage right. of it. So the guys are just sending guys every time there's a ball in the dirt on plays that in the big leagues, guys would be getting thrown out right. left and right. right. I mean, they would, they would never do that. So um, I think, unfortunately, for some of you that like to take advantage of that, that's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> so... That's and would you see that kind of stuff in against the AI, you know, or yeah, is this absolutely. more online too? Yeah. No, it absolutely. All this stuff is all this stuff is in one player game, two player game. But mm -hmm. I guess my point is that it gets exploited in the two player games, right? Right. And so online games, um, our focus was so we were so driven to try to make the online experience more fun and more balanced and more competitive right. for both players, so that at the end of the game, you really couldn't blame the game for you losing, mm -hmm. that it came down to what you did, right? right? Yep. And so what we did with the catcher was, we went into motion capture, we, we got, again, hundreds of animations hundreds. Yeah. from <laughs> the catcher blocking, and, and if you were to draw like a line to your right and left, maybe even a little bit further back, like 135 degrees, mm -hmm. we got from the blocking position, start transitions to run in all those directions, we got pickups, in every one of those directions from every distance the ball could get away from the catcher. That's awesome. Yeah, and then from those catch poses, we got throws to be even more efficient. So now when the catcher gets out of his block ball pose, he seamlessly goes to wherever the ball is around him right. and will have the appropriate pickup and branching throw to get a guy out. And what's even more cool is he knows how much time he has, right? So mm -hmm. say, for example, you strike out, on a ball in the dirt and the plays at first and he has plenty of time to throw like a guy with like maybe a 28 running speed right sure he's going to take his time and throw to first he's not going to rush his throw like he would in some of these examples you see mm -hmm. of him throwing guys out mm -hmm. right. um so go ahead and show some of the slides and we can talk a little bit more about each one but this was what happened in uh, 2017 you can see the catcher we just made him miss that ball pass ball he comes up to throw and you see how much time it takes for him to pick up the ball and lob the throw because the first baseman's actually not there ready to make right. the catch. So he had to take something off the throw. Um, go ahead and show 2018. And you can see the efficiency of the catcher. Look at how far away the runner is from the bag, too. Still able right. to get back. And still able to get back, yeah. It's a little dark in the back. I hope it's not as dark for you guys. But... Um, the ball's in the dirt. I think we, we yeah. zoom in, but it's hard for me to see. <laughs> there we go. So you see the catcher. If you can back it up, Matt, a little bit to the beginning. That's good right there. He blocks the ball. He, gets, he goes into one of the new poses I was talking about to pick up, and he uses a new branching throw. First baseman's ready. It's quick. Bang, bang, bang. And you see, again, the tag right Precision on the arm. Precision tag. 
So all those things we worked on, you're seeing in one play right there. Mm -hmm. And that's not only additional logic, but tons of animations, mm -hmm. right? That we link yeah. together in all these different situations. Um, there's 2017. I'm going to have you play that again, Matt. So this is exactly what you guys take advantage of in two-player games, absolutely. okay? This is one of the most common so, things. And you can yeah. see here how long the, the runner on first play, one more time, Matt, the runner on first didn't even go right away, and you can see he's still safe. And, and I want to also add that that catcher is not a user catcher. That was the CPU running and throwing. And now you can see how quickly they respond, right? Play that one more time. Watch how fast the catcher comes out of his crouch. Uses a new pickup. And so that was a short distance pickup right next to him and used a branching throw. I mean, he's exploding out of his stance to make uh, These are things that, are, that would seem like common sense, right? That you yeah. should always have in your game. Mm -hmm. But believe me, there's, I, I can be doing this probably for the next 25 years and we're gonna <laughs> constantly be pouring stuff into this game that you see in real life. Right. Not only just getting better, more realistic animations, but, but becoming more like the real life players on the field yeah. and doing the things Absolutely. that they do, right? So this is just a, an ongoing process. And every year we work on, on all, of AI, all of defense, all of offense. We do something mm -hmm. for everything, but some things we focus more heavily on, and this is one of them. Absolutely. So this is 2017 again. I hope you guys see the show 17 up there. And not think it's this year's game. <laughs> and here's the 18 version of the same play. From his knees? Yeah, from his knees. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, the catcher efficiency is huge. And not only will he, you know, be better on, on, on block balls and balls in the dirt with runners, um, you know, trying to advance bases, but even uh, especially coming home. So on... Um, on wild pitches, he's more efficient getting to the ball mm -hmm. and the pitcher right. covering home plate. Are we still on the same thing? Yes, okay. Yeah, these are just these these ones now are just clips from eighteen. Okay, cool. So these are all MLB. The show okay, 18. so the okay, so this is just like more catcher efficiency. You can see he's not shooting out of a can. He's actually coming out of his crouch at, at the real time. Thrown off the mask. Thrown off the mask. Yeah. Using a new pickup. Yeah. Urgent throw. Yeah. Right. He's not and some of these, not. it's not like you never would have saw these things in 17. Some of the stuff you would have seen, mm -hmm. it's not like we reinvented the wheel, but it's way more efficient. And we got tons of new branching throws and catches to facilitate all situations now. So you shouldn't run into any of those situations that right. frustrate you so much. Here's a really good, um, I think this is the slide. Yep. Even though he's out here, we're showing the tag, but you can see his arms straightened out. And another super precise tag right on the hand exactly yeah yeah so this this whole system's been rehauled again and, and super excited about that um what's the next one matt all right, cool. So, so far we've talked about tagging animations and all the branching when we're in the mm -hmm. field around third base around first base now we're talking about catcher pitcher and pitchers also have some more urgency this year too, not only the yep. catchers. Yeah, so along with everything I just talked about, it was very frustrating mm -hmm. when you would hit a little dribbler out in front of the plate and the pitcher had priority on that ball only for him to get to that ball and, wow. and plant, make like a two-step plant before he threw to first and the guy beats the throw out to first base. Yeah, right. um, and yeah, that's extremely frustrating. Not only did we get um, more, uh, we, got a, we, got, we got more throws, but we got a pitcher-specific pickup that makes sense based on where that ball is located mm -hmm. to the left side, the right side, whether the pitcher's left-handed or right-handed, and from from makes where sense. he yeah, yeah, and for where he picks that ball up, um, there's no you know clap in the glove to throw. There's no extra step um, on the momentum that's taking him. He plants on that right foot and throws, or left foot and throws, and I think over time you'll notice a huge difference with right. the pitcher efficiency. Um, and, and again, like I said, with the catcher with two strikes when he drops it, if the guy's slow, he has time, he'll mm -hmm. take his time. And that's what I really love about the system is that it knows the runners. We know who's running. And, 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 and you can see, by the way, that the guy, how he chooses his throw type 
it makes perfect sense. And we don't want guys hurrying their throws when they got plenty of time to throw to first and vice versa. So. Some examples of that. I'm out with the show 17 here. Picture going okay. to cover. So go back to the beginning and pause this. So as far as, as far as pitcher efficiency goes, so we just talked about him fielding. Um, this one is another one that took quite a bit of time in the motion capture studio mm -hmm. and choreographing and making sure we had everything right. Um, we'll show you some examples of 2017 and 2018. And what's really cool about this is that uh, for left-handed pitchers and right-handed pitchers, because it matters when they get to the plate because they're tagging mm -hmm. the opposite direction, right. they have to set up a little bit different. So for both, we have setups in all directions where the ball could uh, ricochet off the catcher okay. um, all the way behind the home plate all the way around so the way that the pitcher reacts gets to home plate sets up um, is going to be completely different so we're focused uh, on the pitcher's movements here yeah yeah so the pitcher right now you can see he's set up with his back turn which doesn't make a lot of sense um, and in 2018 you'll see how he sets up uh, facing wherever the ball and right now you can see the catcher and I know Go ahead and pause it real quick. So the catcher used that slide to go field the ball. Uh -huh. And just so everybody understands, I've heard a lot of people complain about, oh, he's using that slide. It's all about being efficient, though. And so what we did with the slide, we didn't have as many throws from the slide. We got more throws that will create more efficiency. He won't always slide. It depends on how far away from home plate it is. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. When it's a lot closer than that, he'll use the pickups. Um, and also if it's ricocheted even further where you can use a pickup and get a stronger throw to like second base or third base if he needs to. Nice. But just so everybody understands, it is a very efficient way for a catcher to field a ball and to get the ball back to home play. But you can see how quickly he did that and back it up a little bit. And you can see okay, how when, the pitcher, when gets the, the pitcher gets the plate, stop it. So stop. So the way that pitcher caught the ball, we have three different timings on the pitcher catching the ball. So he can catch it early like that. So you can see he caught that ball on the run. So he caught it on the run mm -hmm. and he's going to set up to make a tag. Mm -hmm. We have a throw, I'm sorry, we have a catch a little bit later than that and then we have one when he's already set up. So we had, for right-handers and left-handers, we had to do different catches from different distances because that catcher might be throwing the ball early. Right. And if he had to wait for you, he would have stood up and got in that throw ready pose, he would have had to wait for you. In the meantime, the runner just slid in safe. Right. So now we can quickly throw to that pitcher wherever he's at on his way to the plate. Nice. And then those are all new tags for the pitcher as well. So all of these improvements are gonna just lead to a better, you know, experience, a better field, the execution when you're trying to make a play, you know, <laughs> we're gonna have more animations that are gonna take over and, and kind of help you get exactly what you think you should be getting. You know, you uh, want that, that rush home. Well, these are the things that were super frustrating. Mm -hmm. You played online and this guy scores from third every single time because the yeah. catcher can't throw the ball because the pitcher's not ready right. to catch it, right? And, um, and, or the catcher can't get up fast enough to go pick right. up the ball. Right. And, and again, it just extends innings and it allows the guy you're playing right. against to have another at bat and right. do, you know, do something, you know, score another run or whatever. So yeah, all these things are super important. We understand that. Mm -hmm. um, this is just another cool slow motion shot of the same thing. If I remember right, this is a pretty. You see how quickly he can too. catch and throw. Oh yeah, right on the that, right hand. On the hand that he tried the to touch. The hand was coming yeah. down to hit the home plate and perfect. Yeah, Ullman did a great job with these. I mean, um, a lot of work, but it's well worth it. Very cool. Yeah, for sure. And is this another one? This is from eighteen. It looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is an example of the pitcher. So I know left-handed pitchers had a hard time last year, and I heard that a lot online as far as fielding ground balls to the left side. Mm -hmm. So like these little dribblers like that. So I think that's why we put together this example to show a left-handed pitcher. Um, right, spin and throw. Yeah, you can see how quickly he got to yep. the ball and threw it. So this is 18 we're looking at right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another one from 18. Right-handed. Yeah, same thing, just right. Right-handed pitcher. Same thing, same spot with the right-handed pitcher. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, fielding a spot, super important, right? Um, you know, with the, with, with, especially online, because a lot of guys have a hard time making solid contact with pitchers throwing balls all the time. Right. You know, it gets difficult. <laughs> and these guys, you're battling guys, but a lot of times you'll swing, full swing dribblers that are almost like bunts. Right. And uh, so we really need to shore up that whole catcher-pitcher um, fielding <clears throat> triangle right there 
to make sure that um, it, mm -hmm. it was it was more efficient and that it wouldn't be frustrating on the defensive side where these guys were getting extra, you know, not extra base hits like a double or triple, but more base right. hits in yeah. a game uh, because oh, of silly thing. stuff like this. So it was a throw to first and throw to home. Oh, this is this is, this is, really is another. This is when well, we were talking about exploits. I love this one too. <laughs> You had a, did you have a slide for 17 on this one or not? I don't uh, think we did. Yeah, we couldn't get it. This so one's amazing. Okay, so hours. yeah. Okay, you're going to have to play it again so we can set it up. Stop at the beginning. Okay, stop. Okay, so there's a runner on second. Yeah, there's a runner on second only. This yep. guy's got a, sw a swinging bunt. Mm -hmm. Pitcher comes and feels the ball, throws to first. The runner keeps going home, another user. And you can see how efficient the first baseman is getting rid of the ball. Right. And getting that runner, who I think was like 91 a, speed. He's a 91 speed, wow. that runner that was on second. Nice and this was also a really another common thing you'd see a lot in online games where if there's those swinging bunts and you have runners in scoring position, yeah. might as well give it a shot and send them home. Right. Well, that, yeah, and it, it, that was just the thing. That's just exactly. another thing that pissed people off all the time, exactly. right? They just, it's so frustrating. This is amazing. Because it's something you would never see in real life. Nobody's really going to do that. I'm right. sure it's happened before. You can always, mm -hmm. you know, Google it and s <laughs> who scored from second on a bunt. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll find something. But um, it's not a common thing. And I think it was a little bit too common last year yeah. in the years past. So, Well, as we're watching these, we're about 30 minutes into our first stream of MLB Show 18, showing off our new hit hitting engine. We're coming that, that's coming up. We've been doing gameplay, the new tagging engine we've put in. We have a whole month or two of streams ahead of us. We got yep. sweepstakes. We got all sorts of fun things to give you guys, and we have a new legend coming up in a little bit too. This is Chris Gill, Lance Leahy. If you're just joining us here on Twitch, and you, if you're watching on the archive, glad you're catching up with us. Did you just call me a legend? No. Oh. <laughs> We're revealing a legend. We're revealing hey. a legend. <laughs> they said more legends coming. Up. More, yeah, no, we'll have a lot. We'll have a few. I'll take it. So we're still looking at the, uh, the efficiency that we've added. Looks like we have a pop-up here situation. So run around oh, third. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something Lance was telling me happens online all the time. So you can see like on these little bloopers where, uh, a, 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 you know, a normal Major League Baseball player or runner that's on third base wouldn't try to take advantage of unless he's extremely fast, I guess, at times, depending on the game situation. Just, this is just showing you how quickly he gets rid of the ball and is able to get that guy going home. Not taking those extra steps, not taking, you know, time patting the glove or right. just turning, planning, and throwing. And, of course, that can be all kinds of throws, right, depending on how he's making that catch. So here's another great one, urgency. So it's urgency yeah, in so, the field, yeah. So pause this real quick. So I think, okay, yeah, so we just grabbed this example. So this is kind of shifting um, the subject a little bit, it, but it does pertain to efficiency. Mm -hmm. it, um, so in our game, most – most of what we've done to determine whether we should throw quickly or not comes in our throws. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we're doing different this year is we're looking at the catch type. Mm -hmm. So if the batter is a really fat, so when you're playing shortstop, middle infield, mostly shortstop because of how far back he is and how long it takes to throw across the diamond. If Hamilton's hitting and I'm playing short, not only am I going to, probably cheat up a little bit mm -hmm. in case he doesn't hit a really hard sure. ground ball, right? I'm going to lose a little bit of coverage left and right, but I, I have to cheat up because I know that if I don't catch and throw quickly, I have no chance of throwing him out at first base. Right, the so there's speed, two yeah. things I'm thinking of before he even walks up mm -hmm. to the plate. One is cheating up. The other one is I'm charging everything right. I possibly can charge unless he just smokes one at me, right? right? And so that's what we did in our game. Um, it's very frustrating as a user to get sucked into a setup catch when you're pu pushing the stick forward and you're expecting a ground ball charging catch with a quick throw, and he right? Waits on it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the game yeah. just takes you and sucks you into this setup catch, right. um, and the guy beats it out. Extremely frustrating. So that's that's one of the main reasons why we looked at this. Not only because it's more realistic, but how frustrating it was to have runners beating out hits. And so it was kind of like the last part of, you know, last year we did a really good job, I think, of being more efficient with our throws. Right, right. And now we're bringing the catch system into it. Uh -huh. So now, now your game is going to know. You'll, you'll see on the exact same hit, if I have like a Molina running down the line, he might set up and make a throw to first as opposed to charging that ball right. and playing a charging catch and throw when Hamilton's running down the line. 
right. because we know who's hitting and we know how fast they can run, just like a real life major league player does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's going to be more risky, right? Because those are um, those are um, difficult, more difficult type plays. If I'm fielding a ball on the run, whether it's bare hand or glove side, um, it's a more difficult play. So there will be more risk of of, of dropping that ball. Right. Of potentially missing that ball mm -hmm. um, just like in real life if Hamilton's batting right. and he's running I have a higher risk of because I got to be really quick yeah. of missing that ball. you know you got to hurt so him. yeah so it's pretty much yeah. pretty much the exact same thing and so this is kind of an example of that that he's just charging on the run um, it's a little different because he's moving like at uh, 45 degrees but it works moving forward 45 left and right do you need so, to have a math degree to play this game is this a 45 degree angle versus a 30 degree <laughs> angle? No, just if you're going forward, man. <laughs> Trust me, I don't have any kind of degree like that. So <laughs> I get it. All right, so what, what other kind of examples do we have as far as fielding? Was this the last one, Matt? Yeah. Okay, so this is the last one of fielding. So we just looked at tagging, the new tagging engine, really. All the new yep. rewrites, hundreds of animations from in the field when you're tagging a player at third base, the catcher, the plays at home, the pitcher rushing to cover a ball at home plate and cover uh, and then we just saw here some other charges and other things where you're not just going to wait back on the ball to come to you yeah and you got to hurry and try to throw it first quickly yeah and so those are just those are some of the main things i want to talk about you understand that the whole game is like that so everything we did in fielding whether it's the outfielders catching a routine fly ball and a guy tagging it for third um fielders you know whatever the right. second baseman going in the hole to make a play back at first double plays it all of this stuff applies. So we have mm -hmm. more catches, more throws that we've added to the system so that mm -hmm. not only is it more efficient, it's a lot prettier as well. And we have multiple right. branch points where they, we added multiple throws for all those branch points in our catches. So we just right. continue to grow our throwing library mm -hmm. and our catch library so that each year you guys get a new experience. Right. And of course, we're going to keep around, mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff that's already good. We're not going to break that, yeah. uh, but we are going to add to it. So smoother, more realistic, fewer exploits online, yeah. especially. Yeah, for sure. That's what you'd expect in MLB The Show 18 compared to what you had last year in 17. Who's ready to talk about some hitting engine? Let's do it. All right, Lance. So you can see here, actually it's over here. Um, these are the sort of big things that we focused on with the hitting engine this year. Mm -hmm. um, and these were based on a lot of the feedback that we saw from the community. Uh -huh. um, not only just from the community at large playing 17, but also a lot of the valuable resources we got with the closed alpha and all, all the right. great feedback and data we got from there. Um, so we worked a lot on opposite field power. Um, that's kind of why Nick was joking earlier about just late, still great. Um, we focused a lot on the timing window. Um, and that has a lot to do with being able to pull balls fair, right. keep them fair, right? right? Um, we did a lot of balancing and tweaking to contact and power swings, and a lot of that has to do with, um, like, like we've been talking about the whole time, it's, it's about competitive gameplay. And sometimes, especially online, when you get a guy into a two-strike two count, mm -hmm. you know he's just sitting there fouling everything off with contact swings, so there's been a lot of balancing in that to mm -hmm. make those at-bats. If, if he's fouling yeah. pitches off, you know he's putting the PCI on it and he has good timing right. kind of thing. Um, we've made a lot of changes to the swing analysis, which we'll get into. Um, we'll cover plate coverage indicator actually uh, next mm -hmm. um, and then obviously as we've been talking there's, there's a lot of online specific changes to hitting that are very specific to two player games yep. um, and then we've had a whole new slew of changes and upgrades to our physics system. Cool. Yep. Um, before we go on, can I get a time check from the, uh, the guys here? What time is it? 2.40. Alright, so at about 2.50, so what, 10 more minutes or so, we're going to do the sweepstakes. We're going to give you a keyword, you put it in the chat once. So we'll announce that in about 10 minutes. We got some games to give away, stubs, and some packs. It'll be fun. All right, let's move on. PCI slides, I think, Matt? So this will be pretty cool. I don't think any, I don't know if we've ever told anybody oh. about the plate coverage indicator, right? The PCI. I don't think so, but here you go. Everybody yeah. sees it now, so good luck. <laughs> So this is, a, this is basically just a visual representation of the PCI, right? When you're using zone batting, it's that yellow thing you're trying to move around and put on the ball, right? Um, and the cool thing is, if you look at the PCI and you kind of split it up vertically, it's broken into hit types, right? So in the middle band, there's a lot of line drives, and the bands above and below, so as you start to go down, mm -hmm. uh, you start to get hard grounders, 
easy grounders, and then when, you're, when your PCI is really far off the ball, it's a lot of choppers. Mm -hmm. um, going up, there's various degrees of high fly, eventually leading into pop-ups, right? Um, and why we have those little dashed lines in between each hit type is that there's some overlap, right? Mm -hmm. um, a line drive, uh, something right on the line of medium fly and line drive isn't necessarily always a line drive. It isn't necessarily mm -hmm. always a medium fly. There's a lot of sort of attribute math going on in there right. and based on your timing and where you put the PCI, it, it results in a lot of the hit varieties that we have. So it's yeah. not just linear, right? It's not just, oh, always right here is always a fly ball. Always mm -hmm. right here is always a line drive. Yeah, and I would also say don't get caught up too much in, in the actual words high fly, medium fly. Right. They don't mean exactly what they say there, meaning exactly. that each one of those can be, you know, besides hard grounder and below, line drive, medium fly, high fly, those can all be home runs. Exactly. Right? So that's actually what we're going to get into next. So yes. that's just basically the breakdown of the PCI. And next we're going to show three PCIs, all <laughs> side by side. And um, so on the very far side here, we have um, a hitter with weak power, a hitter with average power, and a hitter with a lot of power. Power, power. Exactly, <laughs> power, power. Um, so you can see here, especially with the power hitter, a medium fly is actually, for a really strong guy with a lot of power, is just as good as a line drive. Exactly. Because like yeah. Gil was saying, a lot of those balls will just end up carrying out just mm -hmm. due to how strong they are. How strong they are, yeah. Exactly. And then when you look at an average guy, a medium fly is not going to be a great hit for those right. guys, typically. Um, right. And then with a guy with not a lot of power, you're really just looking to try and put the PCI right on the ball and try and pepper line drives well, around. Right. Yeah, and I think a good, so w I, when I watch a lot of streamers playing, I see a lot of frustration when they do the exact same thing with one guy, you know, with another mm -hmm. guy, but you really exactly. got to look at the player because that's a huge, that's going to be a huge impact on the result. Exactly. So now as Matt layers on the next changes here, you'll see how this sort of, you can now start to see some really interesting mm -hmm. differences between these guys. So with a, with a super strong guy, even a high fly is, can be a good hit sometimes, right? You know, yeah. everybody's seen it. A guy like Judge will yeah. not get the best swing on a ball, but it might carry out anyways for a home run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for average power guys, still medium fly, buys, medium fly balls are pretty mm -hmm. good hits. Obviously, hard grounders are always pretty good hits because it sort of puts a lot of pressure on the defense like Gil was talking about, mm -hmm. especially if these guys are fast. So, uh, so we're just talking about when we're highlighting these areas yep. as if the ball lands in this part of your PCI if you're exactly. using zone hitting. Exactly. So if it's right down the middle, just a little above, just a little below, we're saying that the results can vary, especially depending on the type of player you have. Exactly. So still here, we're looking, everything's really good here, right? It's right. all greens. It's all, right. these good. are going to be the things that are going to get you on base, drive in runners, hit extra bases. Uh -huh. And now we'll, we'll layer on some of the weaker parts here. So obviously, everybody here, easy grounders, these are, your PCI is way over the ball. Yeah. These are really sort of like Gil was talking about earlier, swinging bunts, dribblers, mm -hmm. not great hits. You're typically not going to reach base on you these. You see a lot of this in online game. <laughs> <laughs> At least when I'm playing. In seven. Or I'm hitting. Right. Yeah. Um, and now you can also see, so for a guy with not a lot of power, a medium fly is not a great hit for him. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of weak fly outs yeah. for a guy like that. Um, and then for a guy with average power, high fly is not a great hit type mm -hmm. for him, obviously. And then our final sort of layer on here is you'll see a high fly for a, a weak power hitter, obviously not a great hit type. Yeah. Um, these are really sort of towering fly balls. Sometimes they barely live the infield. Just not a great hit, right? So with weak hitters, you're really, really looking for line drives, squaring that yeah, PCI exactly. up as best as possible. An average guy gives you a little bit of leeway, but still, you're, you're looking to line it up, right. try, and, mm -hmm. try and drive the ball. Um, but with a power hitter, you actually have quite a bit of leeway, especially on the upper end of the hit types, right? Fly balls for power hitters can be really good mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. when you got a runner on third and less than two outs. Absolutely. Drive them in, bring the second yeah. fly. So that's the plate coverage indicator, again, when you're using zone hitting in MLB The Show. A lot of you guys have been using it for a while now. Right, and we're showing you this because uh, as some of you have seen in some of our trailers and as, as some of you that participated in the closed alpha, we had a dynamic PCI option. Mm -hmm. People were wondering yeah. what those different things meant. Um, so if we can cut into the game here, Matt. So we're looking at MLB The Show 18 here. Can you yep. let me do anything with, uh, with the uh, yeah, widget? Yeah, give me the widget control. We'll be good for now, though. Okay. Um, so here we have, um, let's see who we have at bat here. 
So we have widgets set up. Uh, the pitcher's always going to throw a fastball down the middle, and we're going to sort of go through all of the various hitter types, a weak power guy, an average right. power guy, a high power some, guy. Some developer tools we call exactly. widgets. Yeah. So this is Max Stassi. Not great power, uh -huh. right? Not even really exceptional contact. Um, and you can see that represented by the PCI that he gets. There's just a thin little border on the bottom, mm -hmm. um, and that's indicating, just as a reminder to you, hey, this guy doesn't mm -hmm. have a lot of power, probably want to look to square up the ball a lot. So we'll show you with some good timing here what it looks like with a, with a weak hitter. So I sat back a little bit on that. And I, I think you probably want to talk about a little bit how we sort of shook up the lines there, right? Well, I, yeah, because I, I just think it was misinterpreted what we, were, we put out there last year with the just lates. Um, and I know you guys say just late is great or whatever <laughs> that saying is. And I, I understand why. So what we tried to do this year was just make sure that based on the pitch location and the timing of the swing, and, exactly. and which we'll show you with the, the animated feedback, it'll make more sense, that we've kind of opened up that range. So good contact actually will spread out a little bit further. It right. won't just be straight up the middle on a pitch right down the middle with perfect timing. Right. That expands into the gaps from left center all the way to right center. Right. So, and then, um, and then just past that, you'll get the just late and just uh -huh. early, and then foul balls will be late and early. Exactly. But those yeah. can be good results, too. I mean, we saw Lance's first hit was a just late, but it was a good result. Exactly. And that's the, this mm -hmm. is the perfect example, right? When the pitch is right down the middle, you have the whole field to yeah. work with. Yeah. Um, and, and actually right here, as I followed up with a better timing swing that was rated good, the hit velocity was actually higher on this one than just late. And that's yeah. been a lot of the tuning we've done with hit velocity. So when you're later, possibly less velocity. We're exactly. going to get into that, those exactly. examples. Yeah. So here, I'll try and go to the pull side a little bit. Is that our weak power, our weak power guy? Even weak power <laughs> guys can hit home yeah, runs. Yeah, I mean, he probably had a few home runs last year. I don't know. <laughs> and this is great. So right now, this is getting into what we were talking about with the timing window yeah. and pull hitting and velocity tuning, right? So we're just early, mm -hmm. um, and it was right down the line. So. Mm -hmm. Depending on wind or in a different stadium, that could have hooked foul, right. no doubt. Um, they're sort of borderline. Um, but it ended up being a home run right in the middle of the PCI and the highest exit velocity that we've seen so far. 96 miles per hour. You he see that on the hit speed there. Hoff. Uh, so here, I'll try and put one right back up the middle again. A little bit later that time. Um, let's see what the exit velocity says. I think my timing was still probably good. Pretty decent exit yeah. velocity, trying to push it into the gap. And again, these pitches down the middle, it's going to spread that cone out. So your timing is going to be much, exactly. much more. We're going to be much more lenient on what we right. give you as far as good goes. So now let's go to an average guy. If you uh, want to bring up the widgets here and put in, uh, let's put in Reddick. I think he's the next batter. Okay. Go ahead. So now this is Reddick, um, and we'll show his attributes here. So work much in, better work, contact. Work hitter. in progress attributes. Absolutely. <laughs> attributes are work in progress. Don't get hung up on them. 1050. All right. Sorry. It's, it's, uh, it's time to do the sweepstakes. <laughs> 250 Pacific time. So we're going to do the sweepstakes here. So get ready to put in the keyword. Let me just read the rules one more time. We're going to give away two digital deluxe editions of MLB The Show 18, two vouchers for 67,500 subs, and a bunch of standard packs, six in all. And you get, if you win one of these, you get 10 standard packs. We're gonna give away six of those. So real quick, the rules, no purchase necessary for the sweepstakes. Uh, we're gonna announce the keyword right now. So get ready to put it in the chat just once. Gotta be online at 3 p.m. Pacific. So in about 10 minutes, we'll uh, contact you through the Twitch inbox. 13 or older and a resident of the US or DC. Void where prohibited. And we're gonna put the rules on the shownation.com. And they're going in the, tw the Twitch chat right now. Um, so you guys ready? And we're never going to ask you for your password or your username, so never right. worry about anything like that. We're never going to ask you for that. This will go to your Twitch inbox. So here we go. The keyword is, Matt, do we have a, a little graphic or anything? Oops. <laughs> oh, no. B as in boy, A as in apple, M as in Mary, B as in boy, I as in a I, <laughs> N as in Nancy, and O. So Bambino, one word, put it in. Put it in the Twitch chat only, just once, and around 3 o'clock we'll send out, uh, if you're a winner, look in your Twitch inbox. There you go. I see, all, I see it being spelled correctly. There it is. Okay. All right. Just need to put it in once. So back to the hitting. 
Yeah, so now we've got uh, an average power guy, right? 56 power currently yeah. in the current build. Um, so not great, but not bad. Um, and now you can see his PCI, he's actually got a border across the whole thing. And this is just a reminder to you that, hey, this guy's actually got some power. So like the diagrams that we looked at earlier, there's a little bit more leeway up and down with a guy like this mm -hmm. for, for decent hits. So we'll stay on that. It's gonna be probably good timing, it's my yeah. guess. I tried to sit back on it a little bit. Yeah. 90 miles an hour, kind of right on the borderline of like a line drive and a medium fly. So what we can do here is we can try and sit a little lower just to induce some more fly balls. This time to my pole slide, pole side. I'll just start Double into the gap. Bit. Yeah, go for it. Good exit velocity, yeah. 99. Um, another point here too with the swing analysis that's changed now. So it's good, good, which is, hasn't been how we've done it exactly in the last couple of years. Um, we're grading your contact result this yeah. year. So we're not just telling you that you hit a line drive again or that you chopped it or whatever. That's sort of inherent to what you're visually seeing. Yeah. Um, but these ratings will go from good to okay to weak. And then there's some very specific ones like jammed. Yeah. Uh, if it's really inside and you have a broken bat. Um, but those will give you an idea of sort of how well you're placing the PCI mm -hmm. right on the ball. All right, so we're using zone hitting here. Exactly. So I'll try and induce a fly ball here. Oh. Wall? Almost. Another double. Again, kind of right in that zone, yeah. high exit velocities. Uh -huh. So I'll pull the PCI down a little bit more to see if we can induce a high fly here. Much higher fly ball, but again, a weaker hit actually yeah. for this guy. Didn't carry as much, lower exit velocity by a few miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, that made sense. And as you can see, the ball is a little bit higher in the PCI. Obviously, right. that's what we're doing. We can show you here some uh, line drives on the other side. That one I waited back mm -hmm. on a little bit. And he had enough uh, power to kind of muscle it out of the infield, even though exactly. it was a lower hit speed and velocity. Exactly. Here, let me try and get a good timing one here. I'll just try and send it right back up the middle. Oop. One of those home run cameras, but I don't know if this is gone. No, <laughs> it is foul. So that's a cool one. Like we were talking about just early, right? Mm -hmm. these, these aren't always fair. Mm -hmm. kind of, there's a mix depending on a lot of things that can be fair, they can be foul. But again, cool. another really good example of pull side power, 109 exit velocity. That's yeah. the hardest hit ball we've seen with this guy. And the exit velocities will make a lot more sense this year. Exactly. And being just early makes sense in, the, in, in that it was right down, like, even though it was foul, most of the time on foul balls, you're gonna get early, but depending on the stadium, the wind, um, like in, in this stadium, the wind's blowing the other way. It had no effect on this whatsoever, right. but the spin and all that. So it's it very awesome. easily could get one, uh, right. a foul ball that st says just early. Right. It's usually for balls that are more foul. Right. So now why don't we go sure ahead foul. and throw in a power guy here so we can see mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit of a difference here. So let's, uh, let's go to the Dodgers this time. So we'll go to the bottom. Let's throw up uh, Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. What a year right. he had. Go ahead. Now, let me change teams here real quick. So now, Cody Bellinger, obviously a power guy. Yeah. I don't think there's any question about that. And as you can see now with this PCI, he's actually got a little border on the top. Again, just going back uh, to the diagrams we went to, remember there's more leeway from middle up with a, with a guy with a lot of power right. here. Um, and as we'll see here, I'll show you very quickly. Again, attributes are a work, uh, work in progress, yeah. obviously. He's got some pop. 88 power versus right. Yeah. Strong guy. He's gonna be able to carry a lot of balls deep, even if they're higher in the PCI. Right. So we'll try and sit on one here. Drive oh, right up man. the middle, first swing. Look at that. Cody. New home run cam here, which is interesting, and we'll get the feedback. Oh, great, great play must take away our feedback. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Let Widget bug. Let him trot around the bases. So there's a hard hit line drive there. It was a little bit early probably though. A now what buttons are you using when we're doing these tests? Are you using the power swing with square, X, normal swing, or contact with circle? Yeah, I like to use X personally just to uh -huh. get a feel. Um, there's a lot of trade-offs between power and contact as many people know. Obviously if I'm a power hitter, the PCI mm -hmm. is gonna shrink a lot. And then when you're talking about how the PCI works, I'm much more likely to get just below, just above something, which aren't really great hit types. Right. So in certain circumstances, it's very, very useful. Um, but I like to use X personally. Uh, and there's actually where you, where you see the swing analysis with the ball right there. That's actually yeah. a great example of a ball right on the sort of hit type borderline yeah. of a line drive and a hard grounder. Right. Yeah, you see you kind of got on top of that. It's exactly. a top spin, yeah. Ooh. 
Ripped it. So this one, I, I try to power swing for, <laughs> for Steven here. Pull side, hardest hit, hit ball. Hit 112 seen. miles an hour. Yeah. 112 miles an hour. Oof. So again, here, obviously, what we're seeing too here with exit velocities is they're directly tied mm -hmm. to the hitter's attributes. Here's a just late. Here's a perfect example of what's going to be just late that happened to go foul this yeah. time. Um, good PCI location for this guy. Probably would have been a high fly ball, medium yeah. fly ball kind of thing, but could have carried out if my timing were a little bit better. So try and just be right up the middle with this one. Another good hit type there. Hit our hard hit ball, 111 this time. Um, and then, so what we're showing a lot, you know, again, like Gil was talking about with just lates, just earlies. How come sometimes, like on that hit is a perfect example, good timing, but I actually pushed it right. the opposite way, right? right? And it's actually because the good timing's big, and that's what we're trying to show yeah. with that timing window, right? You can see, oh, I was on the early side of good. I was on the late side of good. Or conversely, if you were just late or just early, you can see how close you were to that good timing window. Right. Right. All of this is to help people dial in their timing, dial in their sort of the way they handle certain types of pitches. Obviously, we're just dealing with pitches down the middle, but timing's a little different when pitches are on the inside. Right. Timing's a little different when pitches are on the outside. Yeah, exactly. You want to be a little early on the inside part. You want to be a little later on the outside part of the play. And that's what's being described in the animation that's popping up <clears throat> in the swing feedback, right? Exactly. So we'll see right here. Let's focus in on the swing feedback. Right basically in the middle of good timing, which also makes sense with Basically, where it went, we drove it right back up the middle. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I don't know, you didn't talk yeah. about yet, but the, the different colors in the, um, in the swing feedback for the yeah, animation is right kind of then blending yep. all those little in between areas that Lance is talking about. Exactly. So let's see. They're here. not defined as red, green, and yellow. Mm -hmm. You see that they kind of blend together. Exactly. And, and that's, it's, it's just like our PCI, right? It's not just a hard line, this is good, this is bad. There's overlap right. bleeding right. out. Obviously at the extremes, which are no, denoted by the reds, those are early, those are late. Those aren't really ever going to be great for you consistently. But as you start to move in towards good and towards mm -hmm. the green and the yellows, it does get progressively better. Right. And like Gil was mentioning, it's basically you're just w sort of narrowing your hit cone where you're going to sort of pepper the balls out. Right. You want to bring them in yeah, within and, the fair foul lines. Yeah, and really just trying to educate you guys. Most you, everybody probably understands how this thing works, but just want to make sure that you, you guys understand that you're in complete control of your hitting. That honestly, where you put that PCI over the ball is on you. And so you're earning your results is what I'm trying to say. But you also have to understand that you're not going to get the same thing every time in the exact same spot. Otherwise, the game would be completely canned. Exactly. It, you would be frustrated. Um, so I hear a lot of people a lot of times go, that looked just like that other one. Why did, it, why did I hit a bleeder over the shortstop's head? Or, uh -huh. or, and the other one was a little bit further for a flyout. Or this one was for a flyout and this one went for a home run. It's because you can't have the exact same result on every exactly. single time you put it. So it, it might look the same. But you're going to get different results because exactly. um, it, you, you have to have some randomness in it uh, as far as moving that ball up and down in that PCI. And the attribute of the player is going to determine the majority of it. Right. Exactly. Uh, real quick, our, the sweepstakes is over now, 3 o'clock. We're going to start sending out winners, the prizes in their Twitch inbox. So look for that. Uh, you can stop putting in the keyword, which was Bambino. So thanks for entering and thank you for watching. We still are going to talk more about the hitting engine, some ball physics. Yeah. Uh, a little surprise involving our cover athlete and the new legend that you haven't seen yet that's coming in MLB Show 18. Ooh. So we're going to keep rolling on here. Chris yeah. Hill, Lance Leahy talking about the new hitting and uh, tagging engine and everything else. I think this was actually, it was back to back here. So um, I just hit two home runs back to back with Bellinger. And the first one I kind of pushed uh, to left center. Um, and the distance was shorter here. And on this one that I pulled, much uh, another 30, 35 mm -hmm. feet in distance. And again, this goes to a lot of the tuning we've done with opposite field yeah. power, especially in relation to f fly balls. That's mm -hmm. really where it matters. Um, so a guy like Bellinger or a guy like the Bambino, those right. guys have enough power to occasionally hit opposite field home runs. Fly ball opposite field home exactly. runs, yeah. Um, but the guys like we were using earlier, an average power hitter like right. Redick, he's going to struggle. He'll occasionally hit an opposite field home run, but not, not consistently. And then obviously a weak hitter is really going to have a tough time hitting yeah, the opposite field for home sure. run. Well, I'm going to go tag out with one of our other uh, colleagues here while you guys yeah. set up for the next part. I'll be right back. I think we're going to talk physics next. Okay. Let me just put this on uh, let this play.
Yeah, here, let me uh, put it on the... We'll let you guys watch some gameplay here of the computer playing himself. So there's nothing else on it. Oh wait, we got the pitch down the middles on right? Yeah. Yeah, right in the yeah. I have four C man center on. And that's it? Yep. Alright, cool. Take this. So uh, yeah, so next, so, uh, this is going to be kind of like the, the, the cool thing that, that he was talking about with, with Judge and uh, yeah. a little. This is really oh. cool, right? Because this is the other part of what's going on here. Um, obviously, you can put the PCI on the ball. You can change your timing. But at the end of the day, it's all about physics underneath the hood. It's all about physics. And so the next guy that's coming in is going to be um, our lead AI engineer, uh, Jeff MacArthur. And he, uh, he actually is the one that wrote the physics for the game. Um, so we kind of came up with a whole new system last year yep. uh, with ball physics that uh, was amazing, actually, the, the changes from the year prior to that. Um, but just like everything else, like I talked about earlier, we, we continue to um, enhance everything, everything that we do. And so Jeff uh, wasn't satisfied with, um, with everything that we had already done um, with the ball physics. And so uh, we decided to add on to that and that's why Jeff's here he's going to talk a little bit about the changes that we made and um, the video you guys are about to see so um, if you guys want to show that or do you want to talk about it a little bit first uh, we can set it up a little bit the uh, changes last year <clears throat> pretty dramatic we volume we started to take into account everything from the angle of the bat where it was at contact the pitcher speed, the spin of the ball, uh, how tall the guy was, all these things uh, were factors uh, that allowed us to increase the amount of hits that we had. We created a lot more chaos. With that came uh, some things that we found after feedback and so far, forth. Uh, I ended up this year going through and doing an audit of it just to make sure everything was correct. And the first thing I noticed was that we had uh, Disparaged, and their uh, high fly balls weren't fl weren't flying as far as they should. Basically, so we had some problems with that. And what I did was adjusted uh, how we figure our air density. And so now we are using the real equations. And amazingly, everything lines up very well. And that sort of sort of sets up this uh, next video when Judge came in uh, to my office and I did a little demo for him. I just thought it was super cool. So. Like we have, uh, we get information, um, just like it's, it's public information. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, on certain websites or whatever, uh, like on certain hits, uh, like the exit velocity, the angle off the bat, um, the, the with the air strong, density, speed, the pitch, the wind. altitude of the stadium. All of those factors go into a ball traveling in any, in any given one stadium, right? And I just thought it was super exciting. One day Jeff comes into my office and he goes, hey, you want to see something cool? And uh, I'm like, of course, I love when Jeff says that. So I walk in there and he's, uh, he shows me a, a hit, a home run in a stadium um, on, I don't know, some video that was on whatever. He had some video up of a real life home run. And uh, he goes, here, now I'm going to show you something cool. And he shows the game, our game, and he shows the identical hit in the identical stadium. It looks exactly the same. I'm like, how'd you do that? <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was amazing. Well, the interesting thing is uh, we can just take the numbers that you might see on TV, the angle that it took off, the angle uh, of incline, and the speed off the bat. And if you, <laughs> if you put the same pitch with the same hitter and put those numbers into our game, it, the ball lands pretty close to where it would in real life. And that's not something that happened last year. It's a big improvement. Yeah, huge. You guys want to show that that um, yeah, let's show the video. that little video? So here's the cool video that Steve. So this is an interesting one here. Um, this home run gets hit, and it hits the sign right here, the pinstripe bull sign. Now what you'll notice here is, at first when I do it in the game, it's going to go to center field. It's not going to go in the right spot. So it's supposed to be ending up over here, but it'll end up a little bit over here. Okay, so the interesting reason is uh, it's the wrong-handed pitcher. Yeah, 
This is what's really cool about, about how perfect. This is how we find these things. He was testing this with right-handed pitcher, put in the left-handed pitcher, and found out his numbers were actually correct. Oh my He's like, why aren't my numbers right? And so then we put in the left-handed pitcher. Yeah, put in the lefty pitcher, and then it'll land over there. Wow. <laughs> because of the spin difference, right? Yeah, so, so this is an interesting one here. Um, this. Yeah, so what we were showing there was uh, just plugging in all the numbers and having the same batter and the same pitch isn't enough. In that case, the difference was the left-handed pitchers, uh, the angle of the pitch was different. So when the ball, if it comes in on this angle, you're going to get more curve to that side. And so just the difference of the angle of the pitch from a lefty to a righty was enough to move that ball 12 feet, 12 feet or so yeah. towards left field and end up with the more accurate uh, hit. So it turns out it's sort of proof that the spins that we're get, are generating are really accurate at this point, yeah. just from small bits of information. Yeah, it's super cool. It's funny. I looked up at that monitor and uh, probably don't do this very often, but I saw some guy wrote up there, do you think judge cares? And I th it's hilarious because I know there's a lot of guys that troll and they write stuff like whatever. It doesn't bug us. But what I wanted to say about that was the only reason he was in the office looking right. at it is because he cared. He asked to come in and he asked to, to understand more about how we made our game. Yeah. And, and he wanted to talk to the engineers. He, I think he would have stayed for another 20 minutes. He wanted to stay. He was super interested in it. So it just makes me laugh when people say stuff like that. I have no idea, but it, 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 it's kind of funny. But uh, anyway, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, no appreciate problem. It. Appreciate, it. appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Bye. Steve? Yep. Give me a minute here. Steve's got to get his mic. Well, I think we're actually about to lead into potentially one of the coolest things about all of our streams, this one and every one coming up. Every single one's going to have a legend reveal. New legend, never been oh, in our sweet. game before. Let's do it. Should be pretty cool. Let's see who shows up here. That means a lot to me, like being an old man here in the studio. <laughs> Anybody older than like 28, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the guys I remember. All right, so before we show, Matt, you hear me, all right? Before we show anyone, Ooh. we just got to kind of set it up, right? As Lance said, we're going to show yeah. a new legend, all right? So here we go. Here's the setup. Five tools, not two. Yeah, all right. A lot of legends are five tools. Okay. Nine-time All-Star. So, okay. All right, pretty good. 318 career average, so he could hit. More than 400 home runs, so he had some big power. Mo he had multiple 30 home runs and 30 steal seasons. So again, Ooh, going to the five tool. list. 30-30 had several of them. Yeah, it's getting list. more narrow, isn't it? All right. <laughs> As it's going. If you, now you're gonna start to get it though. A violent swing. Yeah. A cannon for an arm. And ladies and gentlemen, he's going to become the first Hall of Famer for a franchise in Cooperstown uh, this summer. Yeah. And that'll be with the Angels. So we want to introduce to you our newest legend in MLB The Show 18. Vlad. Welcome Vlad. Yeah. Guerrero. That's from, uh, he's, uh, he played for, well, it, they, they played put him the in Expos. the Montreal, yeah. but uh, when he played for the for our director's favorite team, the Angels. Yep, and he plays the Angels, and he's going into <laughs> Cooperstown in the Hall of Fame as an Angel. And, Former uh, cover guy, too, right? Yeah. He mean, was. He, we have, yeah. uh, I think, two posters of him up here somewhere <laughs> yeah. on, on, the, on the, the wall of right. fame. So we, you, know, you saw in the trailer, obviously, the Babe and a bunch of the other legends we've seen. Vlad's also one of the new ones, and we have more to come. We're really excited to tell you about, just like today, with, uh, with Vlad. Yeah. Um, so every stream, like Lance mentioned, will try to show you something new, and that'll include next week's stream too. Um, so we, uh, I mean, we've gone through a lot today. We went through all the yeah. tags, all yeah. the new, the engines we built around them, from the hitting to the urgency we added, and overall, we just hope it's a better experience. You know, when you're playing either against the AI or especially online yeah. against another player. Exactly. Um, and we want to just thank the, the community because they gave us a lot of feedback along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, from start to finish of the year, and we've had a lot of one-on-ones and a lot of good stuff with a lot of the guys who really care about this game as much as we do, I think, too. They I enjoy think so. playing it. And I'm glad you brought that up real quick because I wanted to mention that. And we, we do listen to you guys, and we yeah. do we really appreciate the constructive criticism mm -hmm. that comes back our way. Yeah. We really value it, and we take it into the design rooms, and we discuss it 
everything. So don't think that we are yeah. putting stuff in the game just to frustrate people. We know when there's some general problems and right. we try to solve them every single year. And even what we're seeing today is a work in progress. Every day we're having hidden sessions going with a, mm -hmm. a big group of yeah. our designers and you know, a bunch of our testers and we're always trying to make it better and, and make sure we iron out any kinks before we go live. Uh, early access March 23rd and then the official launch the 27th of March. So we're a little less than two months away. Yeah, exciting. So Matt, what do you want to show next? What do we got? Nothing. Do you have the, uh, <laughs> what, do you, your, what do you want to show? Our, our you next, don't want to leave? Nothing. Our next stream or anything like you that? We got to get back to work, man. I got <laughs> no. stuff to do. Nothing? All right. Well, <laughs> we thank you for watching. Welcome to MLB The Show 18. The streams have begun. Yeah. I That's think right. next week we got the Little Things stream. That'll be next Thursday, 2 p.m. Which is going to be pretty exciting. There's a yeah. cool little something in there. Little Things is always one of those vague, open-ended streams that doesn't... <laughs> specifically deal with one mode, so we're going to throw yep. a potpourri of, of cool changes and uh, improvements mm -hmm. to the show, and there's some cool things we'll talk awesome. about, and a new legend. We promise to, uh, to give you another one. Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, so, thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, Chris Gale, Lance Leahy, Jeff MacArthur, and all the guys in the back here. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. Oh.